It's Paul with the Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday live stream video. So hopefully some of you are able to uh, to join in. But nonetheless, uh, this is my second live stream. And today I want to talk about something that everyone, everyone is talking about. It is a big deal. It's a huge deal. And I've been telling you about this for ooh, yeah about a year or so. And you know what I'm talking about, right? It's about the Bitcoin ETF approval. Bitcoin ETF approval. Everyone is like, now they're like, oh yeah, this could be a big deal. Oh yeah, Bitcoin. Yeah, I mean, okay. But you know, there are things that are important, critical. And I think you would like to know about this Bitcoin ETF approval that matters for you, that matters for uh, what we're doing. So let's get going on on this. All right. Uh, first, before I do any of that, my usual disclaimer, which is that this live stream and all of the content that I make, whether it be whether you consume it on ATG Digital Media, on X, Ball Man Speculating Podcasts, uh, our model portfolios updates, all the content is not investment advice, not financial advice. But what does that mean? You know, it means that you know, you can choose to do whatever you want with it. And it's your responsibility, whatever you choose to do with it. Past performance does not equal future results. Errors, mistakes, oversights. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, they can happen. Capital loss is a potential and likely outcome. Um, when you engage with really the markets, trade, speculations, investments, I, the owners, uh, contractors, employees, associates of ATG Digital Media, which is my company, we own, we trade, transact in the investments that are mentioned in this live stream and in all of our content. And speaking of ATG Digital Media, that's the website, atgdigital.media. We have paid subscriptions that begin at $9.99 per month and up. We focus on innovation and growth because that's where we believe uh, you will wish you had your money looking back, I don't know, three years, five years, seven years, 10 years. Really, any time frame, really, at this point. So we focus on what would be called growth, innovation stocks, and crypto. And we do picks, uh, recommendations, updates, market strategy, commentary. And if you want to check it all out for free, paulmanpilly.substack sub is where you would go to check it out. All right. So Bitcoin ETF is coming. And I'm going to try and do share screen uh, this week. Last week, I did it. I thought it was working, but it turns out it wasn't working. But uh, first things first, right? So after what has been essentially in a war between uh, uh, various folks in crypto, but particularly a company called Grayscale, which is the largest crypto asset manager, they've had a, a, a stock that has traded on the over-the-counter market, not the New York Stock Exchange, not the NASDAQ. Remember, there's three markets that operate in the United States. There's the New York Stock Exchange, which is the oldest exchange, and there's NASDAQ, and then there's over-the-counter. And Grayscale, because you know, they knew that the SEC would never give them approval, oh, years and years ago, when crypto was barely anything, they were like, okay, let's start this thing. And they floated this thing called the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, which allowed people to buy into Bitcoin in some way without actually owning Bitcoin. Because remember, I mean, even, I don't know, even in 2017, on that first huge Bitcoin run, right? I mean, where it went from a few hundred dollars to $17,000, it was hard to buy Bitcoin. I mean, Coinbase was around, but it was difficult. And even like to get, like to move money in. So many people were searching and Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, GBTC, was the essentially the only game in town. So fast forward. Uh, to crypto winter that you know we've been through in 2021, 2022, 2023, and a huge discount develops, right, in GBTC, right, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. I mean, it's as much as 50% in October last year, 50%. Yeah, I mean, that would be like the equivalent of buying Bitcoin today at what, what's what, it's like about 42,000, like buying at 50% off. 50%, yeah, and you know, people were selling, not buying. Remember, 
uh, if you were reading our Substack, you know we were telling you about this in real time. So I'm not trying to take credit for something I didn't actually point out to people. But nonetheless, Grayscale, well, they, they decided to say, hey, well, the way to close this discount is to turn this into an ETF. And those of you who don't know how ETF work is ETF works is that uh, there is a there there are people who whose job it is to keep the value of the ETF more or less in line with the underlying assets. And so if Grayscale is thought, well, we turned an ETF, well, this discount will be bridged because now you would arbitrage between the, you know, the Bitcoin market, crypto market, uh, there's a futures market for Bitcoin, and you can arbitrage between these and that would sort of just like collapse the discount. But the SEC kept saying no. They said no. No, we won't approve it. We won't approve it. We won't approve it. So Grayscale Bitcoin, <laughs> Grayscale said, hey, we're going to sue you. And they took this to court and effectively they won. The court said, hey, SEC, hey, U.S. government, you are not providing any good reason for why this should not be approved and essentially compel them to provide a reason or else they said, get on with it. Yeah, you know. So long story short, we're now on the verge of, of, uh, of Bitcoin ETF approval. And there is massive excitement across crypto land as people anticipate this, this enormous event. I mean, you know, if you watch my YouTube channel, so you know, you, if you've read my Substack, I mean, we're talking about estimates as high as $100 billion uh, coming in potentially in I mean, I've, I've heard people say on day one, but let's just like be safe and say on, 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 on week one, right? Yeah, I mean, definitively, you know, at least based on what I'm reading. And remember, what I'm saying, not investment advice, not financial advice. I'm not predicting. I'm just looking at all the information that is out there. I don't make up the world. I simply like, you know, look at what is out there and try and make judgments uh, or to to try and, 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 and place uh, myself and the subscribers of ATG Digital and viewers of my channel in the right place. Well, obviously, as everyone knows, I get things wrong. So, hey, no guarantees, no certain. But nonetheless, people are talking about 100 billion plus coming in. Yeah, I mean, on day one. Now, you know, and then people are talking about like a trillion dollars coming in over a time frame. Why? Because a Bitcoin ETF allows pretty much anyone, a person, a company, an organization, a government to go in and buy. And everything that, you know, researchers are saying is that there is a massive, massive, massive demand for, for, for Bitcoin that is, that is waiting there. Now, here is the, the thing. So I, I said that, you know, there's three things that you need to remember. So let's get to thing number one. And let me start to share my screen here. Okay, where do I want to go first? Uh, let me see here. Uh, yeah, okay. Let's get to this first, which is that when is this setting up to actually happen? So if you read widely, you'll see that there seems to be general consensus that it's going to be in and around January 10th. Not exactly on January 10th, but in and around January 10th. Uh, why is that? Well, uh, various people who are quite experienced at uh, how ETF approvals work, they have looked at the timing of the filings, they have looked at the timing of the SEC's response, and that's where we're coming. And as you can see, you know, if you look at the screen, there there is a lot of people uh, starting to tell you that this is true and, and start to make bets, right, around this. So January 10th um, is approximately the time that people are talking about uh, in terms of uh, in, in, in terms of the time frame for uh, for the ETF approval. I'm not sure if that that um, that that screen shared, um, but um, hopefully it did. But let me get now to uh, the, the second one. Let me stop sharing the screen here. Uh, the second one is that what what is what, how do markets usually behave when there is a really well-known event? I mean, so if I'm telling you this, you have to imagine that every big hedge fund, every big asset manager, 
I have wealthy individuals that want to make, I mean, they all know this information. So it's not like some secret, right? I mean, you now know this. So January 10th, ETF approval, 100 billion, maybe in day one or week one or month one, whatever it is, various parts of the information. So one of the things that I have realized, uh, both from research experience and then also from sort of like running model portfolios now, you know, in, in newsletters and in research, et cetera, is that regular folks think that, you know, oh, the, the, big, the big move is going to come after the approval. And the thing is that if you really think about it, if you know something, right, like this, it's like, hey, there's a big event. There's the potential for like a lot of money being made. Are you really going to wait for the event? No, you're like, no, I'm going to buy now. So one of the things that, people uh, mistake is that they think that the big gain is going to come after, but really the phenomenon that actually tends to happen is something called buy the rumor, sell the news. In other words, as you and others go to buy Bitcoin, you're starting to bid it up. You know, that demand starts to push it higher and higher and higher. And that's the buy the rumor. Because right now, obviously, everything I've told you is conjecture. We, we don't know for a fact that's going to happen on January 10th. We don't know for a fact how much money is going to go in. We don't, we, you know, this is all into the future. But you know, because as humans, we, we like to make bets. We like to speculate on events going there. Everyone else is doing that. So... This is the second thing that I would tell you, which is that if you're thinking like, hey, it is going to be in a massive explosion after the ETF approval, in my judgment, in my opinion, given how widely circulated this information is, it's likely to be a buy the rumor, sell the news type event. Now, you know, hey, in our ATG digital portfolios, I wrote in my sub stack, which um, let me just get that up. Um, so all of you can read it uh, or at least see it. Here, let me share this. I just wrote it yesterday. All right, let me see. Can oh, I think if I turn this on, yeah, now you should be able to see this, um, uh, which is that I wrote this substack called our game plan for a BTC ETF approval. And I laid out that, hey, for the most part, while it's going to be very tempting to want to go back and forth and think you're going to time all this and be like, hey, Paul said this. And so it's guaranteed to happen. Listen, no guarantees, no certainty. You know, I'm making educated guesses based on my experience, understanding research, et cetera. No guarantees. But for the most part, you know, in like our model portfolios that have stocks or crypto, we're going to do nothing. We're not going to trade. But we do have a short term uh, trading tier, which is the platinum tier. Uh, and let me just scroll down to where you can see we've already traded quite a bit uh, in and around the volatility around events for Bitcoin. Now, in that tier, we are going to go back and forth, et cetera. But for the most part, we are going to just kind of like hang out and do nothing with respect to, you know, all of these things that are going to happen. Why? Because, hey, number one, there's no guarantee that, you know, I'm going to be right or the buy the rumors, uh, sell the news thing is going to work out and exactly how. And the potential upside, given even the rough information that I presented to you, which is massive potential demand, is that, you know, it's, it's worth enduring through the volatility. But set your expectations correctly, which is that if you're thinking like, oh, January 10th will be an explosion where we'll go from whatever, let's say I theorized in my Substack that uh, around January 10th, like from here, we're, we're gonna see a pump between like, you know, and it began this weekend. Like suddenly we went from 38 to 40, suddenly we were at 42 and I'm expecting this pump to continue. And it's going to be a pump that goes right into the event. So that's the buy the rumor. And then once the approval comes, a lot of people are going to be stunned and shocked because oftentimes my experience is that you know, the, the folks that you know just wanted in on the pump, short-term speculators, short-term traders, they, they're, they're done. On January 10th, they will sell. And you know, these folks have a lot of money. You know, most hedge funds are short-term oriented and they can cross a price decline, which in some cases can be like from wherever the pump like officially begins. 
I mean, I don't think it, you know, it, it probably is going to be maybe from like, you know, around here, maybe a little bit higher, maybe it was a little bit lower. Can't exactly tell. And you can't exactly tell how, you know, much they'll push it down because it is relative to who else comes in to buy. But nonetheless, in my experience, folks expecting like, you know, like, oh, January 10th, it will go to a million dollars. Yeah. You know. No, that that is not my experience anyway. Maybe that's going to be the you know the first time it happens this time, but that is not going to be uh, what I believe unfolds. So the point of this video is just be like, hey, there's stuff going on, and there's cause for excitement. There's cause for interest. There's cause to be optimistic, to be BOP. But you know, we still have to deal with the reality of how markets actually work and operate, which is that. The default is usually buy on the rumor, sell the news. So when something is really well understood, really well known, uh, and widely talked about, I mean, you know, you can pretty much Google like I did, you know, for Bitcoin uh, uh, January 10th. And, you know, you've got people making YouTube videos saying they're going to give stuff away and all of these things. So, yeah, I mean, I would be pretty chill in terms of like getting, be like, oh, let me get it all in because you know what? Uh, at some point, there will be a pullback. I mean, I, I did a, a, I've done a number of Bitcoin videos, including uh, one in which I showed you, which is like the, the Bitcoin bottom uh, comes about 18 months before the halving. And then there's like, I believe it's like a period after where you see the peak price. Uh, so it's always a process, folks. It's always a process. All right. Last thing that I want to talk about is that so I'm going to share my screen again, and uh, I'm really hoping that these screens are getting shared because <laughs> it would kind of suck for me to keep doing this. And uh, okay, <clears throat> uh, so on this screen here, you'll see that I did a video back in March of uh, this year in which I said three triple X ways to play on Bitcoin. And in that video, I talked about the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, which at the time was trading at, I think it was like a 30, 35% discount. Uh, it's now about 8%, by the way. And then I talked about Coinbase and I talked about MicroStrategy. And I've just added a couple of other sort of um, uh, indicators. I mean, I've added Bitcoin and then I've added the the stock of the biggest crypto miner out there. So what you'll see is that, yeah, you know, I mean, prices have been moving higher um, really since what, like about October or so. And so, you know, going back to my point, which is that buy the rumor, sell the news. Now you'd have to say that, you know, Clearly, word of the Bitcoin ETF, you know, has started to get out there. And um, yeah, there is massive upside. But if I'm right, these are my sort of like, uh, what's the right word? Because I want to get in trouble. They're not predictions because then people take it like, oh, it's going guaranteed to happen. These are my theories, which is that like from here into hmm, right as like, you know, really becomes like hardcore that like, hey, this is going to happen. We're going to get to like somewhere in your, I'd say, forty, fifty thousand dollars per coin, right? And then on the cusp, on the eve of approval, maybe it's January tenth, maybe it's January twelfth. Uh, we'll get to, I'm going to say, fifty-eight, sixty thousand. Maybe we will cross over. Maybe a day after, given just how much excitement there is. But from there, we'll begin a fade. And so, hey, bottom line to this, which is like, we've got to be smart. We got to be unemotional. And we just got to be, you know, in for the long term, right? Because if I'm right about the longer term, and I've talked a lot on this about my sub stack, so just go check that out about the fact that, you know, we have $34 trillion worth of debt, $34 trillion worth of debt, yeah? $34 trillion worth of debt. The money supply in the last essentially three years has gone as like what i forget the number i mean it's like you know 10 x that's not normal that's just abnormal that's incredibly abnormal now then when you add the right the next thing which is that 
the world uses U.S. dollars, right, as their reserve currency. And they are aware of how much debt we have. They are aware how much we have spiked the money supply. And they are also aware that after two years of our central bank, the Federal Reserve, trying to get interest rates to go up, to get some of this money back, yeah, I mean, they're not having much of an effect. I mean, our markets are fine. Our economy is fine. We just had a quarter when we had 5% GDP growth. So in other words, there's a lot of money offering around the system that, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of people that is like, mm, yeah, you know what? I would like some alternative that very few people have, a hedge, an alternative, a uh, choice um, that is not the U.S. dollar. And, you know, some people will talk about gold, but remember, gold has been around for a long time. Where is the new demand that's going to bid things higher going to come from? It's going to come from something new. So my opinion, it is going to be Bitcoin that gets the new money. And why is that important? Well, because all that new money, I mean, if it's estimated at $100 billion within, I don't know, a day, a week, a month, a trillion. I mean, where can it take Bitcoin in six months or one year or two years? Or if you have the patience for three or five years? Well, I have theorized, and remember, not a prediction, not a guarantee, that Bitcoin can get to a million dollars in 2025. And I've based it on really the amount of money that has been just pushed out there, especially since 2020. Since 2020, the government has gone on a spending spree. The Federal Reserve, you know, pumped so much money. And essentially, it is so much that they cannot just get it back. So that money is going to be like, mm, yeah, I think that, you know, there's too many dollars. There's too many dollars out there. Let's find something where the supply is finite, 21 million coins, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's widely recognized around the world. And now with the Bitcoin ETF, pretty much anyone, anywhere will be able to buy it. So, all right, that is the video live stream for today. If you liked it, yeah, you know, uh, subscribe, uh, set the notification button, and then you'll know when I go on live. I can't always tell you like, oh, I'm going to go on at this time. Because I like to think through like, hey, what I'm going to talk about, I want it to be timely, I have to do some work, some research, et cetera, on, on what's there. And then sometimes, you know, just the moment comes and you just got to flip the camera on and go. Either way, uh, I'm going to end this live stream here uh, and say thanks for coming on. This is Paul saying bye. <laughs>